<laughs> Imagine a plunge like this in a glacier-fed lake okay. on a hot summer's day. BC's glaciers are a cool treat, but now scientists are tallying up the cost of this most recent dry, hot summer. And for Western Canada's glaciers, the impact is nothing short of disastrous. We've noticed that in particular, the southernmost glaciers um, in British Columbia have been truly punished by not only a warm summer, but also a winter, a previous winter that was much drier than average. We're with Brian Menounis from the University of Northern BC. He's one of this country's top glacier scientists, and we're going on a helicopter trip. It's a cloudy, drizzly day near McBride, two hours east of Prince George, but there's just enough visibility to get us to our destination, the Castle Creek Glacier in the Caribou Mountains. Typically at the end of the summer, we try to visit the glacier and see how much ice has been retained or lost uh, throughout the year. Most of Canada's glaciers are in the Arctic, around Ellesmere Island. Those in BC and Alberta are smaller, but they're far more accessible. They're included in some of the most iconic images of this country, and they're also extremely vulnerable to a warming climate. What do you think of them? What kind of an emotional impact do they have on you? Well, I'd, I like them. I'd like to hug them. Uh, I'd like to ha give them a permanent hug, but they're not going to be around, at least in uh, British Columbia forever. The, many of those small glaciers will uh, disappear by the end of the century. Castle Creek has been studied intensely for the past 30 years. Here you can see the snow is highlighting a lot of these annual uh, points or lines where the glacier used to stand. On the ground, we meet up with other members of Menounis' team who arrived earlier, including researcher Matthew Beadle. He knows practically every contour of this place. We first came here and the glacier terminus was right here. It was right here at the edge of this lake. And now it's nearly 200 meters um, back over those 10 years. Uh, and was that surprising for you? I mean, you got into this business knowing that they were going to be getting smaller. But just to see it year in and year out and to really see the ice deflate and to see it from a personal level is shocking. To come up every year and see that change is dramatic, powerful. The photos Beetle has taken over the last few summers tell the story, from standing in a cave of ice to no cave at all. At Castle Creek, the freezing and melting process each year leaves ridges on the ground called moraines. So there are these annual ridges. The glaciers pushed these up, and the difference, the distance between this one and the next one, that's how much the glacier receded in one year. So we've had, it averages about 14, 15 meters per year, and the last two years have been 25 to 30 meters each. How indicative is this glacier of others uh, in Western Canada? Uh, it's demonstrating what pretty much all glaciers are doing in Western Canada. They're receding dramatically, um, similarly to what we see here at Castle. On a hot sunny day, you can get the surface going down some 10 centimeters. In other words, over the last two summers, the glacier has shrunk at twice the rate of even a few years ago. These time-lapse photos were taken of two other BC glaciers, the Conrad and Nordic glaciers further to the south, and the loss of ice this summer is striking. Here, the team is preparing to get some exact measurements. They've drilled holes in the ice to measure how much the surface lowers from year to year. So our hole here is roughly seven meters or so. This is about seven and a half meters tall. We plop it down in the ice this time of year, and when we come back next summer, a certain amount of this pole is going to be exposed. Okay, see you next year, you ready? Looks like to let go, I gotta drop it from here. Boop, there we go. A team of researchers from BC universities made this dramatic graphic to show where things are headed in the glacier-rich Garibaldi area around Whistler. By the end of the century, the expectation is all of these rivers of ice will be gone. Part of the reason why this summer in particular was so punishing may be what's going on more than 2,000 kilometers away out at sea. 
the ocean itself was record-breaking warmth, so the ocean temperatures were as warm as anyone's ever seen them. Theron Anslow is a climate scientist at the University of Victoria. Lately, he's been focused on a large patch of warmer-than-usual water, nicknamed the blob. This blob that we saw this summer was record-breaking, um, but there's been instances of the blob back into the 90s and 80s as well. So. There, there have been other blobs, but this is the biggest, baddest <laughs> blob we've seen. The blob is about three degrees warmer than the rest of the North Pacific Ocean. Its relationship with climate change is still being explored, but scientists do know it's affecting everything from salmon migration to heating up the winds blowing on shore. It's basically you have all this, this energy out in the Pacific um, that's available to the atmosphere, and it... You know, it blows over those warm ocean waters and brings those high temperatures right on land, um, resulting in a lot of melt. What's not known is how long this convection oven-like effect will continue. Scientists say global warming started the big glacial melt, and some believe the blob gave it a turbocharged boost. Why does it matter if glaciers melt like this? It's incredibly important. Um, Number one, it's for us in Western Canada, it's water resources. Without glaciers, many towns and cities would lose a lot of their drinking water. Hydro generation would be affected. In some rivers in late summer, glaciers account for 30% of the water flow. And without cool glacier water, spawning salmon would surely die in streams and rivers when it gets hot. Melting glaciers can also alter the geography of the land. In some cases, with disastrous results. The Pemberton area north of Whistler has seen melting glaciers trigger landslides in the past. And just a few weeks ago, one may have played a role in the destruction that swept into Rob Elliott's life. This beautiful handmade rocking horse and a neighbor made for my son. That's, uh... This is his property in Birkin. At the end of August, a landslide tore down the mountain in front of him. Underneath all of this rock is his home and farmland. Everything his family owned was buried under six meters of debris. The glacier was there. It's not there any longer. We had um, the material underneath that glacier is what came down here. Elliot is a geographer by training. He's mapped all the terrain around here, including the small bowl-like glacier that was almost 2,000 meters above his property. Its melting waters fed into a creek. The creek clogged up above and it jumped in the other direction towards our property and brought another enormous amount of material down, completely burying our house. The day of the slide, the Pemberton area had been inundated with rain. The ground was saturated. That, say geotechnical engineers, was the primary cause of the big landslide. But Elliot says they also told him destabilized ground from that melting glacier was likely a contributing factor. And we've heard from people that saw chunks of, of ice and snow coming down in this event. So, yeah, it was definitely here before the event and it's gone now. Elliot and his family are now relying on the generosity of friends and strangers to get by. There's all sorts of piles that I still want to just dig through little bits and see if something comes up, but it's been exhausting. Insurance won't cover his losses, and disaster assistance from the province is minimal. Well, there's no question that this is linked to climate change. The glacier disappeared because of the warming conditions, and the, the, the material under the glacier was destabilized. For those who study climate change and warn about the implications of not reducing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, this past summer was yet another I told you so moment. Do you have any doubt in your head that that's a preview to the future? I don't have much doubt, no. It looks a lot like what we see with climate change projections for the province. BC hasn't resorted to the kind of glacier saving tactics they've been trying in some parts of Europe. People have actually put tarps on the ice to try to keep the sun off and stop the melting. But Matthew Beadle worries it could soon come to that here. So most recent work has shown that by and large, the glaciers of Western Canada are going to be gone by the end of the century. Um, the biggest unknown in that study, however, is what we do, what humans do, how we behave in regards to the atmosphere. 
The research here can't prevent glaciers from disappearing, but the scientists say they can use their work to sound the alarm over the dire situation and what's at risk of being lost. Chris Brown, CBC News, on BC's Castle Creek Glacier.